turn the music up. Let's get it started. Go ahead and shake your butt. <laughs> I thought you were going to finish it. I'm looking for a girl I can fuck in my cyber truck. Apple bottom jeans and a big old sun. Girls, they act retarded. <laughs> Yes. Postavíš najväčšiu raketu v histórii, no nedostaneš povolenie na štart, dokým neuniesieš tulenia, priviažeš ho na dosku, dáš mu sluchadlá na uši a pustíš mu nahrávky sonického tresku rakiet, aby si zistil... Či z toho zážitku nebude v strese. Yes, it's a seal with headphones yeah. strapped to a board. Dva krát. <laughs> I thought you were going to finish it. It's one of the greatest themes in all of film history. Yeah, it's great. I, I think probably where things are headed from uh, the standpoint of AI is that we, we have a silicon shortage now that will transition to a voltage transformer shortage in about a year. Mm -hmm. Ironically, transformers for transformers. <laughs> <laughs> you need you need transformers to run transformers. We're, we're have a silicon shortage today. Um, a voltage step down transformer shortage probably in about a year and then just electricity shortages in general in about two years. I, I gave a speech for the sort of world gathering of utility companies, electricity companies. Mm -hmm. um, and I, I said, look, you really need to prepare for a tripling of electricity demand. Um, they should definitely buy more batteries because the, the grid currently is sized for real time load, which is kind of crazy because you know, that means you got to size for whatever the, the peak electricity demand is, like the worst second or the worst day of the year, mm -hmm. or you can have a brownout or blackout. So I, I, I expect that there will be very heavy usage of, of batteries in the future. A baterky sú v tomto momente najrychlejšie rastúcim biznisom Tesly s najväčšou maržou. Electrification of transport uh, and and electric heating will, will be much bigger than AI, at least in the short term. In the short term, um, but you really have a growing demand for electricity for electric vehicles, and a growing demand for electricity for to run the computers for AI. Mm -hmm. And so this is obviously going to lead to a short, an electricity shortage. Množstvo energie, ktorú ľudstvo naleje do AI, sa bude hýbať v takých číslach, z ktorých sa ti roztopí kalkulačka. Kolosálny dopyt po energii urýchli prechod na solar, pretože slnko mení 4 milióny tón vodíka na energiu každú sekundu zadarmo. A nikomu jeho emočné výbuchy nevadia, lebo je ďaleko. In order to run, uh like really deep intelligence, you need a lot of compute. So it's not like, you know, you can just fire up a PC in your basement and be running AGI, at least not yet. Um, and when I, with regard to AI, I'm saying like right, right now, the limiting factor is uh, silicon chips. Um, mm -hmm. And that will, we're gonna then have more chips than we can actually plug in and turn on, um, probably in about a year. Um, the the initial constraint being literally voltage step down transformers mm -hmm. because you've got um power coming in at 300 300,000 volts and it's got to step all the way down eventually to around 0.7 volts so it's a very big amount of you know the voltage step down is gigantic um so and and the, the industry is not used to rapid growth <laughs> Malo kto je zvyknutý na rapidný rast. 10 rokov dozadu sa dodávateľi a Tesly nepripravili na rast, ktorý im oznámila a potom ju zdržiavali, kým ho dobehli. Po kobercových náletoch meteoritov veľkovýroby 
ti niekoľko príhod povie týpek, ktorý v živote nedržal šrubovák. Vo videu v pravom hornom rohu. So, some people understand the profundity of the Tesla AI system. Most people, but very, very few. Um, it's, it's basically baby AGI. It has to understand reality in order to drive. Baby, baby AGI. Určite je každému jasné, že AI to z baby na dospelého nebude trvať toľko, čo ľuďom. Alebo z baby na Boha. Well, I mean, the really wild thing about the end-to-end -end training is that it, like, it learns to read, like it can read signs, but we never taught it to read. So, yeah. We never taught it what we never taught it what a car was or what a person was or a bicy cyclist. Uh, it learnt what what all those things are, what all the objects are on the road um, from video, just from watching video, just like humans. I mean, humans are photons in, control controls out. Like the vast majority of information reaching our brain is from our eyes. Um, and you say, well, what's the output? The output is our motor signals to our you know, sort of fingers and mouth in order to communicate. Um, photons in, controls out. The same is true of the car. Yeah. Letters and, and you saying... It finds thing. order in, in, in these things. Um, mm -hmm. It finds uh, correlative clusters. In so doing, it's like understanding something deep about the world. Yeah. Which is like, and it's beautiful. That's how our brain works. Yeah, but it's, it's beautiful. Photons in, controls out. Kto vie, ten vie. They're both headed towards AGI. Um, the Tesla approach is much more computer efficient. It had to be, because we were constrained on the... the You know, we only have 100 watts um, and an int 8 computer, 144 trillion operations per second, which sounds like a lot, but is kind of small potatoes these days. Design mozgu robota na kolesach, známe ho aj ako auto značky Tesla. Bol zámerne vyvinutý tak, aby bol hladný maximálne ako žiarovka a výrazne neznižoval dojazd. Jeho výkon je 10 krát vyšší ako najnovší iPhone a 11 miliónov krát nižší ako výkon najsilnejšieho superpočítača. A jeho architektúra znamená, že spracováva a interpretuje informácie na veľmi základnej úrovni. Je podobný 8-bitovému rozsahu, kde je len 256 možných hodnôt. Najlepšia metafora pre porozumenie by bola... Kto vie? They're both um, going to understand the world, but I think Tesla's approach is fundamentally more computer efficient. Mm -hmm. It had to be, there was no choice. Like our brain is very computer efficient, very, very energy efficient. So think of like, what, what is our brain able to do? Um, you know, there's only about 10 watts of higher brain function, not counting stuff that's just used to control our body. Um, the thinking part of our brain is less than 10 watts. Um, and that 10, those 10 watts can still produce a much better novel than a 10 megawatt GPU cluster. So there's a six order of magnitude difference there. Um, I mean, the, the AI has thus far gotten to where it is via brute force, just throwing massive amounts of compute and, and massive amounts of power at it. So this is not where, where it will end up. Um, you know, in general, with any given technology, you first try to make it work and then you make it efficient. So I think we'll find over time that these models get 
smaller are are able to do produce a uh, sensible output with far less compute far less power um Tesla is arguably ahead of the game on that front because um it has we've just been forced to uh, try to understand the world with a hundred watts of compute um and there are a bunch of sort of fundamental functions that we kind of forgot to include. So we have to run them in a bunch of things in emulation. Um, we fixed, fixed a bunch of those with hardware four, and then hardware five will be even better. Um, but I, it, it does appear at this point, uh, that the car will be able to drive better than a human, even with hardware three at, and 100 watts of power. And really, if we really optimize it, it could be far less than 50 watts. What have you learned about uh, developing Optimus, about applying, integrating this kind of real world AI into the space of robotic manipulation, just humanoid robotics? What are some interesting, tiny or big things you've understood? I was surprised at the fact that we had to develop every part of the robot ourselves, um, that there were no off the shelf motors, electronics, sensors, like we had to develop everything. Um, we, we couldn't, we couldn't actually find a source of electric motors for any amount of money. Um, so it's not even just uh, the, the efficient and expensive. It's like a anything. There's not a, no. Huh. The actuators, everything, everything has to be yeah. designed from scratch. We tried hard to find anything that was, because you think of how many electric motors are made in the world. Mm -hmm. There's like tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands of electric motor designs. Um, n none of them were suitable for a humanoid robot, literally none. So we had to develop our own design, design it specifically for for what a humanoid robot needs. How hard was it to design something that can be mass manufactured, could be relatively inexpensive? I mean, if you compare to Boston Dynamics Atlas, it's a very expensive robot. It is designed to be manufactured in the same way they would make a car. And I think ultimately we can make Optimus for less than the cost of a car. It should be, because if you look at the mass of the robot, it's much smaller. And the car has many actuators in it. The car has more actuators than the robot. We effectively need a fish license to launch a rocket. <laughs> I mean, one of the tests uh, goals I have is can it, can it pick up a needle and a thread and thread the needle just by looking? How far away are we from that? Just by looking, just by looking. Uh, maybe a year. Hmm. Although I go back to I'm optimistic on time. The work that we're doing in the car will translate to the robot. The perception or the also the control? The No, the controls are different, but the the video in controls out. Mm -hmm. um, the the car is a robot on four wheels. The, the, the Optimus is a robot with hands and legs. So you but, can but just... They're, they're, very, they're very similar. So the entire machinery of the learning process yeah. end to end is just, you just have a different set of controls. Optimus will figure out how to do things by watching videos. <laughs>